This is pre-calculus video lecture number one on the distance and midpoint formulas. So first we're going to focus on the distance formula. And the distance formula arises from a common question. Say we need to find the distance between two points A and B in the plane. So I'll draw two points here. In this case, I'll draw point A maybe over here at negative 5, 2. And then point B, I'll put it over here at 5, 5. Okay, now how would you find the distance between these two points? So let me draw out, I'm trying to find the length of that line segment. Well, one thing we could do is we could form a right triangle and then use the Pythagorean theorem in order to solve for the distance. So what do I mean by that? Well, look, I'm going to make a right triangle. I'm going to use that distance to, as the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And so if I figure out the length of this side here and then the height, the other side, then I could use the Pythagorean theorem and solve for D. Okay, well, along the base, right, I can figure out the length of that side by taking the difference between the X coordinates. So that side has length 10. And then moving vertically, this side here, again, I could take the difference between the Y coordinates. And so I know that side has length 3. So applying the Pythagorean theorem, remember a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which would mean 10 squared plus 3 squared equals d squared. So we have 109 equals d squared, which means the distance is equal to square root of 109. So the distance is rad 109. Now make sure that that radical is completely simplified, but you don't want to ever give a decimal answer unless you're asked for it. Okay, this is the exact answer leave it as is. Now, instead of having to graph the picture every time, we can just use the distance formula. So let's generalize on the process that we just did. Because what if you had coordinates with like really crazy values that were not going to be convenient to draw? Right? What if A had coordinates negative 147.2? I'm not going to draw that. Okay, so here's your points. I'm going to call them x1, y1. These are arbitrary points in space, x2, y2. And again, I'm after the distance, this side here. So I'll highlight it for you. Okay. And you want to use the Pythagorean theorem again. Well, what I need to do is first figure out what's the length of this side and the other side. So to get the length of the base there, you're just going to figure out the difference in the x coordinates, right? So this side would have length x2 minus x1. And then what about over here, this side? Well, same idea. That's going to be found by taking the difference in the y coordinates. Always do bigger minus smaller, right? So you'll have y2 minus y1. Very good. So then now if I apply the Pythagorean theorem, I'll have x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared is equal to the distance squared. And this is basically where the distance formula comes from. If I take the square root of both sides, then now I have distance equals x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so just memorize it. You're going to use it for the rest of your math career. It's not going anywhere, so it's definitely appropriate to put it to memory. Okay, so let's look at an example. Find the distance between the points P1 and P2. Now, the formula is super straightforward. So as long as you remember it correctly, the only place you might make a mistake is plugging in x1, y1, x2, y2 into the wrong spot. How do you avoid doing that? You label your way into safety. So I'm going to call this coordinate x1, y1, x2, y2. Label it down there. You don't have to do this, but it's just something to help you prevent making a silly mistake until you know you won't do it. So distance equals square root. We have x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is 2, quantity squared, plus y2, which is 2, minus negative 3, so plus 3 squared. And then this is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 5 squared, that's 4 plus 25, so this is rad 29. Box it and call it a day. Good. 
All right, let's look at another example. Here it says plot each point and form the triangle ABC and then show that the triangle is a right triangle, find its area. Okay, so one thing at a time. Let's just plot the points, form the triangle. Look at the points so you decide how to scale everything. So I have to go to negative six in the X direction, negative five in the Y direction, positive five in the Y direction. Okay, so here we go. Here's our y-axis, always label. Here's the x-axis. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'll go five in the y direction. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. So let's see. Point A has coordinates negative 6, 3. That is right here. Point B has coordinates 3, negative 5. That would be here. And C has coordinates negative 1, 5. Here's C. So let's connect all three points, form the triangle. And then now it's asking us to show that the triangle is a right triangle. Well, we just discussed the Pythagorean theorem. So remember, Pythagorean theorem only applies for right triangles. If I can show that the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two shorter legs, which look like they're going to be AC and BC, but we'll be sure in a second. If the sum of the square of those two lengths equals the length of AB squared, then it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem, which would mean that it's a right triangle. So let's go ahead. Our job right now is to find the length of all three sides of the triangle. How am I going to do that? With my handy dandy distance formula. So first let's figure out what the distance is from A to B. So I'm going to use the points A and B. It doesn't matter which one you think of as X1, Y1, X2, Y2, okay? So distance from A to B, I'll have 3 minus negative 6, so that's 3 plus 6 squared, plus negative 5 minus 3 squared, so this is square root 81 plus 64, which is the square root of 145. Okay, nice. Now let's work on the next side, so distance from B to C. That's going to be the square root. So this time I'm going to just focus on points B and C. So I'll have negative 1 minus 3 squared plus 5 minus negative 5 squared. So 5 plus 5 squared. So this is going to be the square root of negative 1 minus 3. That's negative 4. We square it. It's 16. 5 plus 5. That's 10 squared. It's 100. This is rad 116. Okay, last one, the distance from A to C. So that's going to be square root. Now I'm just looking at points A and C. So I'll have negative 1 minus negative 6, so plus 6 squared, plus 5 minus 3 squared. So this gives me the square root of negative 1 plus 6, that's 5. Square it, it's 25 plus 4, so rad 29. Okay, so of these three lengths, of these three sides, which one's the largest? Well, clearly rad 145, right? The other two are smaller numbers. So what I want to do in order to confirm whether or not this is a right triangle is check that would be the hypotenuse if it was, right? If it was a right triangle, that would be the hypotenuse. So is the distance from A to B squared equal to the distance from B to C squared plus the distance from A to C squared? Well, let's see. If I square the square root of 145, it's just 145. Does that equal squaring rad 116 is just 116 plus 29? It sure is. Yes, we showed it. And then, last thing, we're not done. We have to find the area of the triangle. Well, since it's a right triangle, for area, I can use the fact 
that it's going to equal one half its base times its height. So you could use the base and the height interchangeably. It's just not the hypotenuse side. So you're going to use AC and BC. So the area is going to be one half times rad 116 times rad 29. And I didn't simplify any of these radicals, but I need to now for this final answer since I'm not just verifying things. So rad 116, that's divisible by four. So I can write this as one half square root of four times square root of 29. That's my 116 times square root of 29. And then remember, if I have rad 29 times rad 29, that's just 29. Yes? Very good. And then 1 half times rad 4, that's going to cancel out because rad 4 is 2. So this is all just going to end up being 29. Lo and behold. I know, right? Shocking. Okay. Enough with the distance formula. Let's move on to the midpoint formula. So say we want to find the midpoint M between two points A and B. So say we have our points A and B. They don't have to be the same points as last time, okay? The midpoint is going to be the halfway point. Here's the midpoint, let's say, where the length of this segment is equal to the length of the other segment here. Halfway point. Well, the midpoint formula basically comes from averaging the x and y coordinates of the two points A and B. And look at the formula, it should make sense. So the midpoint M has coordinates x, y. And if it's the midpoint of the line segment from P1 to P2, then you find it by taking the x coordinates, x1 plus x2, adding them, dividing by 2. That's averaging them. That's finding the halfway point. And then you do the same thing with the y coordinates. Okay? This, too, is worth putting to memory forever and ever, as long as you need math. Okay, so one quick example, and then that's it. So find the midpoint of the line segment joining the points P1 and P2. Now, in this case, the midpoint is another ordered pair, right? So the midpoint, its x-coordinate, I find by adding the two x-coordinates together and then dividing by 2. And then I do the same thing to find the y-coordinate. So I take 0 plus 4 divided by 2. Beautiful. And this is going to be negative 2 plus 2, that's 0. 0 plus 4, that's 2 divided by 2 is 2. Okay. And we're done. So that is it. That concludes video lecture number one. Stay tuned. We've got graphs of equations and two variables coming up next.